Rising gas prices, global warming, more and more people are looking for ways to cut their energy costs and protect the environment. This next story is about a new house in Evanston that's aimed at both. Here's Chicago Tonight producer Jay Shevsky. Everywhere you look along Evanston's lakefront, there are stately and historic homes. And then there's this one that doesn't quite fit the Victorian mold. But the outward appearance of this house isn't the only difference. I wanted to build a house that had the least impact, negative impact on the environment and the least negative impact on the people who lived in it. Tony Bark is an Evanston physician. She offered to show us around. Well, let's take a tour. But before the tour, a little backstory. Eight years ago, Tony Bark was a single mom with a young son living at this same address, but in a very different house. Christmas night, 1999, a heating pipe burst and the house flooded. Eight months of drying it out didn't do the trick. It was unsalvageable. There was just mold everywhere. When the city the condemned it, the Tony's insurance company attic, finally just, agreed was, that... At that point, there was nothing to do but tear the house down. In its place, Tony wanted to build an environmentally friendly house. Nothing about any of this made sense to me when Tony first brought it up. Dave Dwyer was a home builder with 17 years of experience, but he had no knowledge of sustainable or green houses. He was just the guy sitting next to Tony in her spin class. I said that it made no sense to build an environmental house in an upscale neighborhood in Evanston. But Dave's skepticism was matched by Tony's often unrealistic enthusiasm. Oh, I actually wanted to have like a whole different septic system that would go through the ground and we'd use mulch in the end. But Dave didn't think that would fly in Evanston, and he's probably right. But she convinced him to do the research with her and together they began to come up with a workable plan. And as their plans for the house developed, so did their relationship. Tony and Dave went from builder and client to husband and wife while they were still designing the house. And in April of 2007, they moved in, each with a son from a previous marriage. And that brings us back to the house itself. Building the house cost them just over a million dollars. With the property, they figure it would sell for about 2.4 million. There is a lot about this house that is eco-friendly, but here's the bottom line. With about 4,700 square feet to heat and cool, their total utility bill year-round is about $80 a month. The average cost for energy in an average home in this neighborhood it might be $800. And the number one reason for that savings is in the basement. So that's where we pick up our tour. Dave told me that the house is heated and cooled using geothermal technology. These pipes go 125 feet down into the earth, where it's a constant 55 degrees. These heat pumps translate that into heat in the winter and cooling in the summer. It doesn't use any natural gas or any fossil fuels at all. The system gets a little help outside. Somewhere up there on the roof are photovoltaic solar panels that provide most of the electricity to run the heat pumps. And then there are the trees. The house was designed to take full advantage of more than just their beauty. They shade our property in the summer, which is what we want. And when their leaves are gone in the winter, we get all this passive solar heating and we have 70 windows in this house. The house also has features that won't necessarily save them money, but will do less harm to the earth. The rooftop is just recycled tire. It looks like cedar shingle, but it's actually 100% recycled tire. But what's the advantage of that? Why is that a good thing? Well, it's reclaimed material that would have otherwise sat in landfill. In all the time that I've been building, uh, I found that this has the best of slate and cedar. And the cost, they say, is comparable to cedar. As you can see, we don't have a traditional lawn here. The home's landscaping also follows their sustainable principles. We feel very strongly about not using fresh water for a front yard. So we put in all wild prairie plants. Once they're in, they never need watering, even if it's very dry. All our hardscape here is permeable. We don't have any sidewalks. Um, everything is stone or cedar walkways. Even the driveway. Well, wait, but I'm seeing a driveway here that just looks like regular concrete. That's not permeable. What makes it uh, permeable is the fact that we've included these, these drains here, 
And these drains pick up all the water that would normally run off into the storm system, and it transfers that water into our yard over here. And the water conservation efforts don't end outside. Instead of using clean water to flush the toilet, they use what's called gray water. When you take a shower or you wash your hands at the sink, you create gray water. It's not drinkable anymore, but it's not that dirty that you wouldn't want to flush your toilet with it. So as you wash your hands in the system, the water that's going down here right now is going to be going into a tank and it'll be used to flush the toilet. Also upstairs, beds made of pure rubber, covered in cotton. There's no chemical. You know, when you buy these beds that are like foam beds, they're literally foam. They're styrene and butadiene and formaldehyde and flame retardants, and you're getting a whole lot more than you thought you were buying. Likewise, they have no carpeting and little upholstered furniture. And rather than an oak floor, eucalyptus. It grows 150 feet in 10 to 15 years, so it's extremely sustainable, and it's grown on farms. And, they say, it costs about the same as oak. One last thing Tony wanted to show me was the super-efficient induction cooktop. Like a microwave, it cooks without getting hot. You know, I can turn this on and boil the small amount of water in there and keep my hand on here the whole time. So let me get this. So this water is boiling. I've got my hand here, and it's not hot. Dave estimates that all of the eco-friendly additions to the house added about 10% to the cost, about $100,000. And they'll make that back, he says, in about 10 years of utility savings. Dave and Tony recognize that most people couldn't build this home. But they say that the technologies with the biggest impact, like geothermal, are within reach of many homeowners. About 30% of that carbon emissions are coming from homes, from buildings. If everybody made some changes, there would be a huge impact. And I really believe you're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. There is really no in-between. And you have to decide what do you want to be part of. So For Chicago Tonight, this is Jay Shefsky. As a result of his work on this house, Dave Dwyer is no longer a home builder. He has started a new company, American Renewable Energy, which designs and installs sustainable energy systems for new and existing buildings. There's more information on our website.